Welcome back to my class. And for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Manuela Sadovnik, but you can call me Miss Sadovnik or Teacher Manu, however you prefer. I am one of your fine arts teachers here at Vico. Please don't forget to mention your family and friends to download the Vico app. Let them know that it is available on the Google Play Store and the App Store. They can find it like the logo that you see right here. I think it's the very first thing that they can see. B-E-E-K-O, the Vico app. And so we can have a lot of fun here, you know, in this after school programs. And of course, not only with me, but also with the other amazing teachers that we have here. And also let them know that there is a social feature where you see, it's not only about learning something every day and being here in class, but you can also engage with one-on-one -on -one with other classmates, with the teachers, see what they post. You can post the things that you've been doing in class and overall it's a very engaging experience. So don't forget to mention them about the Vico app so they can all join us here and grow as a community. Today, we are taking an important spin, okay? We are traveling back in time. Yes, that's right. We're traveling back in time because we're going to be placing ourselves in China. So last time that we actually did that, we learned about the like the dragon in ancient China and in their scroll paintings. And it was overall marvelous. And in this case, more specifically, we're going to be placing ourselves in China during the Ming dynasty. Okay, so it's going to be centered in a dynasty. Uh, which ruled over China from 1368 to 1644. And here we're going to be learning about a very famous object and even art expression from China that had a huge impact to the point that it is still very valuable today. And people really love this object both nationally and internationally okay so this is something that is you could say it's global like a lot of you probably have seen it your parents know about it anyone that you mentioned this about probably knows about this so today we are going to be learning about the ming vase okay oh my god this one is beautiful and since last class we were learning about the dragon i thought this one was a very beautiful example. Uh, this is a Ming vase with the long, you know, long, the dragon. That's the way that you say it in, in Chinese. Lao Kang, please correct me if I'm wrong. But this is uh, long, the dragon, and it is one of the most famous themes that you could find in uh, China's like artistic expressions and culture. And for today's activity, we will be doing our own Ming vase, okay? All right, so the Ming dynasty, as I said before, was one of the important dynasties that ruled over China. And it was by the first half of the 15th century, that that is like uh, 1400s, that a lot of technological advances were made along with design advances, okay? And here is where the ceramic bases come in. This beautiful, milky white porcelain covered in the most detailed blue cobalt patterns and images started to be made. To be frank, it's one of the most inter internationally demanded type of ceramics till this day. Okay, so that's how important it is because uh, it overall has this impression of elegance, um, fanciness, and of course, power. It's very elegant overall. So for today's activity, we'll be doing our own Ming vase. So the materials that you will need are regular paper or mixed media sketchbook paper, scissors, and glue. I forgot to mention the glue there, uh, or glue stick, either or works fine. Colored pencils, crayons, markers, watercolors, soft pastels, oil pastels, chalks, acrylic paints, or tempera paint, either or you can use for today's activity. Paint brushes if you're using the acrylics or tempera, reusable piece of cloth and container to mix the paint if you're using the acrylics or tempera, and a cup of water to clean the brushes, of course, if you're using the acrylics or tempera. I have here some examples that, as you can see, I wanted to have some that were easier for us to follow and you don't have to follow along like exactly how they look. Um, just try to copy the design and probably use this template for the form of the vase so it's not hard for you. Okay, 
So I'm going, I'm going to start off by sketching it. And also, this was an idea given to me by Lao Kong, the Chinese teacher here from Biko. He's amazing uh, teaching Chinese. I've learned uh, some things there, here and there. And I was in one of his classes and he mentioned to me about the, he mentioned uh, to me the Ming basis. I had another class in Chinese to like in mind in my schedule, but then this one, he mentioned it and I was like, of course. I mean, I love porcelain. I wanted to learn ceramics. I hope to learn ceramics one day. And I think this is like the perfect example, like perfect moment to at least do some sort of approach by just starting by doing the drawing up, right? So I'm going to start off like this with the upper part. And then you can see that it has, so this has like a huge body over, So right now I'm just trying to have like a little bit of symmetry in mind. If anything, you can always find templates of the bases online. So you don't really have to draw them yourself. If you don't feel like doing it, you can find a, a template. But I mean, the idea of it all is that we also start from scratch, try to stress it. Because I've given templates before, but I also thought, it's a good idea for us to really try and build one ourselves, okay? Doesn't matter if you arrive late or early, we're going to be staying a bit more so we can fully do this class appropriately, okay? So right now I'm just adding like those details in the upper part of my base, as you can see. Um, and I want to see what else can I add to it. Let's see what other things I see around that I might add into the into the piece. Maybe I can add like some small flowers. So I'm going to be using this one. Like it allows me to do much more of a flower form. Right? that it doesn't have to be perfect and if you want to make your own porcelain of another type of thing you can always do that okay so don't feel bound that you have to do the exact same design that I am doing no you don't have to so don't worry about it All right, so that is the top part of my base for now. Now I am going to be adding uh, the flowers that I told you. I wanna start adding on the piece that have like very, like this type of shape. You see, like, I'm just doing like the, like the oval here. So this marker really helps me to make those forms in there and really do the, the design as I want it to be. And then I'm just going to add, um, probably I'm going to use a, uh, a probably you've seen that this is a, a watercolor marker. So I've been, I'll be using one of my brushes to move around a little bit of the pigment inside. Cause I'm trying to follow the form of the base. Um, then it has like a line in the middle for those of you that, for those of uh, like the ones that have the curve, the double curve, and then it has some dots. So I'm just going to add those dots in there, in the single ones, it has these dots there. All right. And on the ones that has a, like the line in the middle, it has like these dots on the sides. I'm going to make that. Okay. I want to believe that we have, that we did our base. I'm just going to make some more decorations here and there. 
There's like some of them like showing around. Right? But I think this is pretty much it. I think this is the one. Um, so as I said before, I'll be just moving the pigment around for a little bit. So I'm just going to dip my uh, one of my small brushes in water and just you know like dampen the the pigment for a little bit to move it around and just like color it color the petals inside again you can do this even with a lighter uh, marker if you want you can just do that or you can just color it with with a colored pencil. Since I don't have them with me at the moment, and to, plus I think this is like much more practical and more nicer. I hope I convince you to get them. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it allows me not to be pulling like uh, other things. And what I want to do is that I want to give it a very nice background, something that gives me contrast. So if you have any colored paper, you can uh, always, I mean, you can add it on a piece of paper that has like a lot of contrast, like probably um, it, it can be red, it can be yellow. Those are colors that look, look very beautiful on. Uh, it can be this like brownish one that I have here. It's like the cardboard, like the tint of, of, of like cardboards. So you can do that. Of course, you can ask your parents if they can help you out with cutting the piece. Right now, I have like a piece of paper that is actually quite um, like stiff. So I'm just going by part because I don't want to destroy this piece that looks very beautiful. Wow, look at that. It looks so beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just get too excited. <laughs> So now I'm going to be using some glue stick, put it here in my background. I think it looks gorgeous. I want to give it a nice background. How about we do some flowers coming out of it? What do you think? Okay, I think that is like enough for my branches. And I'm going to go on with my flowers. Okay, so for that, I'm going to make the mixture of the pink tone and for that I'm going to be mixing yellow with white. So just a little bit of yellow, red, I'm sorry, <laughs> my head. Um, a little bit of red with a lot of white so I can have like a bright pink. Okay, ooh, I'm running, I'm actually running out of, of white, I see. Um, I will be using, let's see, because the forms are around they're circular so I'll be using I'll be using this one so let's mix it up I'm going to be mixing the color here yeah I believe that is all for today I mean I'm very very happy with today's result I think this was a very laid back fun way to come back to after school at Vico after our holiday of this past weekend. I hope you had a, a blast on your holiday, by the way. So this is our final result. You see, it's very beautiful. I really like it. I really enjoy the look of it. It is very, very nice. I was using watercolor paper for this one. That's why I like a very, very stiff piece of uh, paper. And that's why it also has some sort of like relief and it looks like that. But I believe that even using regular piece of paper works just fine. Again, it's going to look even prettier if there is like a paper that has that contrast between the vase and, and what's going to be on the background. Thank you so much for being here. Again, don't forget to mention your friends and family about the Vico app so we can grow here as a community. Tell them that it is available on the Google Play Store or the App Store, uh, that we have a lot of fun here, that we learn something every day. It's very laid back, very entertaining for you guys. All right, thank you so much for being here. Have a great one and have a great rest of your day. All right, bye-bye, take care. Don't forget to download the Vico app available on the Google Play Store and App Store. Click below.